Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Templar, and if you are this new to your order, well welcome, and as well also click that bell button and as well as subscribe button for more videos. Anyways guys, today I'll be talking about the history of pre-Roman Gaul, or as it's also known as Gaul before Caesar. And of which, this history can actually be covered from the ancient Bronze Age of the Celtic culture in the region of modern-day France, up until the Gallic Wars of 50, 58 BC to 51 BC. In fact, it's actually been stated that the Celts of Gaul were actually first actually introduced into the region sometime during the late Neolithic or sometime early Bronze Age period. It's stated that during this time, it's stated the Celts had actually creators and masters of art, and of which actually created great lands in, bes in the beginning. In fact, it's stated that the kingdoms that the Celts had created actually created up to five to seven kingdoms. These seven kingdoms actually were, and were even powered by the Celtic people. However, much of our information about this ancient time period is still lost to time due to the Romans. However, thanks to Augustus Caesar, who actually made sure to actually document the history of the Celts, mainly through their entire vocal history, it's stated that the Celts have turned from their vocal history to putting it down in pages. In fact, it's stated that the Celts who actually documented their form in history actually hold the many forms of history importance. Now, why was this form in history so important? Well, it's kind of the following. It stated that the Bronze Age Celtic culture in the region of Gaul was actually more tied to its ancient ancestral homeland of the Hallstatt culture. It stated that in this region, of which most of the Celts had emerged from, later on moved into the lands of the Celts, and as well created the Seven Kingdoms. It was stated that the Celts had actually created the Kingdom of Parisi, or any way you pronounce it as, of which is actually in the modern day city of Paris, or the island of Paris. It was stated that in this region it actually created a great kingdom that was actually so important later on down the line. This later on became a great strategic value area and as well a very great area for trade. In fact, it's actually been stated that when the Romans came, Rome never actually managed to take the city in general. They failed three times. And this actually states something about them. In fact, the city walls of the ancient Celts of Parisii, or Paris, as I'll just state it from now on, were actually stated to have actually been mostly made out of a type of whitewashed dobe. This whitewashed dobe was actually later on covered with a type of lime design, of which you can only see in modern day regions of the Mediterranean at the time. Of which, as you might understand, this could look just like a type of form of ancient Greek settlement. However, this wasn't exactly ancient Greek. So, why did the Celts copy off other cultures? Well, it's actually stated that the Celts had more forms of evolution than any other culture. And as well, they were actually the most wisest of them all. In fact, this can actually be seen when the Celts actually, for example, did actually take hold of the lines of Gaul, they actually created a great kingdoms. These seven kingdoms were stated to have actually followed through and through to a form of history. In fact, some historians actually state that during the Bronze Age, it stated that the Celts had actually made sure to actually fully establish the true kingdom. So, what did these Celtic kingdoms exactly look like? Well, there is no form of map and no form of ancient history. But it is stated, though, that the Romans did fear the Celts of Gaul a lot more than any other culture. Why is this? Well, it's actually stated from a Roman's point of view in a type of book known as the Foreign Enemy, of which this was a type of written down information by the Romans trying to make the Celts look bad or as well like demons. It's actually stated that the Celts of Gaul were actually surprisingly famous for being demons in their own form. However, this isn't true. In fact, it's actually stated the Celts had created the great works of art beyond the measure, not just on regular pots and pans, but also on their armor, scabbard, and including even everyday objects. This is probably one of the most impressive things about the Celts, who of which actually managed to establish themselves as a great kind of work of arts. Now, it's actually stated that the Celts of Gaul were extremely wealthy beyond measure. However, during the time of the conquest of Gaul by the Celts, it stated that the Celts had actually removed their ancient armor that would have actually mostly been made of bronze and replaced it with light combat armor, mainly of gambeson, rawhide, or including later on in the Iron Age of mail. Now, this is actually extremely impressive by themselves. And as well, the Celts were extremely diverse in the region of Gaul, mainly by being horse, horse mobile warriors. 
Now, what does this mean? Well, it's kind of obvious. It stated that the Celts had actually managed to use their horses in order to fight against said foot soldiers. And as well, Roman armies never actually truly faced this type of form of foe ever in history. In fact, it's actually stated that when fighting against the Celts of Gaul, the Romans lost every time until the time of Julius Caesar, who only tried to win at the skin of his teeth. In fact, it's actually stated in history books that the Celts had actually moved from Gaul into the region of modern-day Spain and Portugal, or as known as Celta Iberia later on in history, and then even as well into northern Italy. In fact, it's actually been stated that Brennus, the great Celtic chieftain who sacked both Rome and including Greece itself, was stated to have actually been from the region of Gaul. However, some historians don't really know if this is true or not. However, we do know that there are a great many Celtic chieftains that were based off in history. In fact, there is one ancient Celtic chieftain known as Herconad that was actually buried with his arms and armor, as you see in this image. This is only a representation of what the armor might have looked like, and as well all the stuff that was discovered with him. Which, this is kind of impressively beautiful. So, yeah, this is incredible by far what this Celts might have been dressed as. However, this was only one of the few Celtic kings. And in fact, the Celts actually even created great pots and designed art that would be on measure. In fact, if you take a look at this Celtic boss, for example, that would, or including even a Celtic buckler, this actually has beautiful works of art upon the shield, which is beyond measure the way we think about. It. And this is Bronze Age armor. However, during the Iron Age, it's stated that the Celts had actually created a great kingdoms beyond our measuring. And in fact, the Celts were in Gaul were actually famous mainly because of their type of chariot warfare. Now, it's actually stated that during this time, though, the Celts of Gaul did create types of armor that would later on be used by Rome, such as the Roman Gallic helmet, which would have been the most famous, or including even later on the Roman Spatha. Now, that's actually seen something. But now, take a look at this beautiful work of art from a Celtic horse's helmet. In fact, the Celts created this for their horse, not to just uh, stir the horse, but also to actually even also to put fear into the Romans. In fact, it's stated that these horn areas might have been used to actually stir the horse, mainly when you're riding it, instead of putting a bridle on the mouth, which that actually explains a little more about it. However, the Celts of Gaul were more in line and in tune with the ancient Celtic spirits than the Celts of Britannia or including the Celts of Iberia and Northern Italy. In fact, it's stated that the Celts of, I of Gaul were stated to have actually worshipped their gods beyond measure and as well had actually built vast road systems, but not through forests but around them, stating the following that the world of the nature must belong to the gods, otherwise we are nothing without them. In fact, that was written by a Celtic poet and priest later on down the line in, during the time of Augustus Caesar. It stated that the Celts actually were very nature-like to this form, and unfortunately, much of our information about the Celts of Gaul mostly dies because of Julius Caesar. However, thanks to Augustus, as I stated before, we know a lot more about them. Now, unfortunately, though, we still do not know much about their ancient history. However, it is stated, though, the Celts created great hill forts beyond measure. One of them being this hill fort known as the Halatun. The Halatun was probably the most greatest of ancient Celtic kingdoms. This dead Celtic kingdom was incredibly tall beyond measure. In fact, it was stated to have actually taken part with the Roman legions, or as well aided itself, or allied itself, with Rome long before Julius Caesar ever came. In fact, this Celtic hill fort was so tall, in fact, it's stated to have actually stood up to about probably half the size of the modern-day uh, World Trade Center, which that's still extremely tall by our farm in history. So how did the Celts create this vast hill fort network? Well, it's actually stated it was built time and time again. However, some historians even state it might have been built out the side of a mountain. Which, we don't know if that's true or not. And unfortunately, the said hill fort was disappeared sometime after Rome had actually come to the region. So, unfortunately, we can't understand if this was true or not. But now, the greatest thing about the ancient Celts of Gaul was actually their diverse culture and language. In fact, it's stated that the Celtic language of Gaul was actually extremely different compared to that to our modern-day idealism of Scot or Irish or even Welsh. In fact, the Celtic language that was actually spoken here 
was actually the same that could have actually been sp spoken at the time of a native Brit. In fact, this type of language can actually be near identical to the region of the modern day area of Brittany, of which was technically a Celtic region at the time until France adopted it as its own. So, yeah, you can see that problem there. So, why did Rome fear Gaul also beyond the Celts of Iberia and the Celts of Northern Italy? Well, that's the thing. The Celts of Italy were not as strong or actually wild as their Celtic neighbors from Gaul, nor were the Celts of Iberia. In fact, the Celts of Iberia were more Mediterraneanized. In fact, it's actually been stated that Gaul was more of the wild lands, and of which was diverse with great forests and fields, yet never touched by the world of man. It's almost as though the land itself was barren, and of which no man ever venture beyond it. Now, that's actually saying something. However, this is kind of near impossible to understand, really. In fact, what we do know about during this time in history, it's actually stated that the Celts of Gaul were actually mainly famous mainly because of their idealisms. In fact, as we can tell by this type of structure in history, the Celts were actually very diverse in very much every language. In fact, it's stated that the Celts of Gaul did actually have around up to seven tribal kingdoms that established themselves. However, it is stated though that during this time, the Celts who actually established these seven kingdoms later on split down the line and made more than seven kingdoms. However, it is stated though prior before the Iron Age that the Celts of, Iber of Gaul later on were stated to have invaded northern Italy and later on have fought against the Etruscans in order to claim land in these said regions. So, you could see why these raiding parties would have actually worked. However, the Celts of Gaul were extremely diverse with their money system. In fact, take a look at this Celtic coin right here. This Celtic coin actually does show a type of form in history of how the Celts would have actually been. And you can also see that there is actually a slight bit of amount of writing, of Celtic writing to be precise. Not Roman, not Greek, but Celtic. This is extremely impressive by far. And as well, still, it's unknown of which this was actually Celtic or not, but it has never been seen by anyone else than Celtic for language. So, why did we understand the ancient history of the Celts a little bit more from this, and where did I find it? Well, I will leave links down below for y'all if y'all want to know more about this point in history. As well, guys, if y'all want to talk anything more about this point in history, let me know in the comments below, and I will be happy to answer them as soon as possible. Also guys, click that bell button, subscribe, and also check out our Facebook so that way you'll be notified of another coming video. Anyways guys, this has been Templar. Hopefully you liked this video on Gaul before Caesar, and have a great day.